Hello, this is the hardcore legend Mick Foley, and although I've never listened to straight dog wrestling, I think you should. Have a nice day. Hey, this is George the Iceman, president of Destiny World Wrestling, and you're listening to Straight Talk Wrestling. Hey, this is Joey Maximum. You are listening to Straight Talk Wrestling. Hey, it's the Bubblegum Princess Alexi Nicole, and you're listening to Straight Talk Wrestling. Hey, this is the walking weapon Josh Alexander, the king of Canadian strong style, and you are listening to Straight Talk Wrestling. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy, Aiden Prince. You are listening to Straight Talk Wrestling. What's going on, guys? Your host, George Bakai. I'm here live on location at Battle Arts Academy. I'm sitting down for a one-on-one exclusive with Mr. Aiden Prince. That's me, man. That is me. Thank you. Thank the- you for that intro. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for taking the time out to sit and talk with me. Yeah, I no appreciate problem. that. No so I guess the first question I always ask everybody, yep. and it's a standard question. You already know it's oh, coming. I already know it's coming. <laughs> so everyone has that defining moment yes. where they fell in love with wrestling and they realized it was going to become some part of their life in a full form or capacity. Right, right. Do you remember that moment? It's funny because I was so young that I don't really remember it. Um, but I remember like the, the, the gist of it. Like I was, I was in diapers, man. My grandparents were wrestling fans and uh, they'd throw on rolled road warrior tapes from the AWA. I'd sit there and wrestle with my pet monster in front of the TV. And that's literally, that's, that's where it started. And then it was like, after that, I was hooked, and it just it just kept going, man. I, I grew up on AWA tapes. <laughs> it's so awesome that you mentioned My Pet Monster. It shows how Canadian we really oh, are, yes. right? <laughs> yes. So um, in terms of not so much influences, we'll get into that in a bit, yes. but in terms of like a favorite match, an all-time match that kind of sticks out in your head. This one's going to blow your mind. All right. I'm, I'm interested. <laughs> Let me know. Uh, my favorite match of all the time, it was uh, – I, I wish I could remember the year. Uh, Great American Bash. It was Brian Pillman versus Alex Wright. No way. Yes. And the reason – I loved Alex Wright, one, because he did a backflip off the top rope for an entrance. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. And believe it or not, I had a real love for the chain wrestling and wrestling at the beginning. So if you go back and watch that match, like a majority of it, they're just – you can tell they call it in the ring and they, they did their chain and then it, the whole match is pretty much chain wrestling. But it's like it stuck out to me so much because there's there is high spots, like a big drop kick and those type of things. But it was – it's the first match where I was like, that's wrestling. Like, I can see wrestling in there. And it was, it's, it's crazy. But people are, people are shocked. I'm like, Brian Pillman and Alex Wright. You know, I'm not, I'm not shocked. Yes, yeah. I'll be honest with you. My, my favorite match is one that a lot of people talk about. Actually, Mick Foley talks about it all the time. Right. It was the Madison Square Garden steel cage fight with Superfly Snuka. Wow. I didn't hitchhike to Madison Square Garden like him. That match happened well before I was even right, born. Right, right, right. But I watched it much later at my uncle's house. Christmas, he got the tape, yep. the old Coliseum videotapes. Yes, yes, and he threw yeah. it on. And when he took that super fly from the top, I just turned around. And I said to my dad, I'm like, this is going to be a part of my life in some form. And then a couple of years ago, me and my best friend, yep. Steve the Animal, who's my co-host, yep. Yep. he's not here with us tonight. Where are you, Steve? Well, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> he had a previous engagement, <laughs> hey, unfortunately. Okay, but um, yeah, like mm-hmm. it was one of those moments where I was like, that's it. That's yeah. it for me. And now, uh, speaking of, so now yeah. you've given us your favorite yeah. match, influences. Because I can tell from your style, yes. you're a showman. Yes. You're a high flyer. Yep. There's no bones about it. You kind of love that underdog style where yes. you're kind of, in your matches, the stories you tell when yep. you're kind of back to do a corner. Yep. And then you find that extra notch, that yep. extra bit of adrenaline. Yep. So I want to say, I'm pretty sure one of your influences has to be the Heartbreak Kid. It does. Yes, yes. And uh, you'll love this because it goes back to your uh, your favorite match. Um, Snuka was one of my biggest influences when I was, I want to say three or four years old. I seen that match on a tape, jumped off of my couch, threw a glass coffee table. That was my first stitches Nice watching that match. So it's, it's funny that you bring that up. Um, influences wise. Yes. It was Shawn Michaels, um, Bret Hart, um, mainly those guys, because I could tell by their attitude in the ring that what they were portraying was you guys don't think I can do this and I can. And that's kind of. That's kind of where my, uh, my, my real life comes into play is, you know, like, and, and it portrays in the ring. Like I constantly feel like I'm back in a corner in a corner and I feel that in my brain and in my head. So I try to try to portray that out there. You know what I mean? And 
it, it seems to work. <laughs> so when did your, when did your training officially start and when yeah. did you begin this journey to becoming obviously the Aiden Prince, Prince of Prince or King of Prince city, <laughs> if you will. You, when, when did that all begin? Um, I started uh, training probably about, I want to say we're going on about eight years now, seven, eight years. And you are how old now? I'm 29. You're 29. Yes, yes. You're only so, a day over 21. <laughs> that's a good thing. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's hair dye. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I tell my secrets, everybody. Uh, like, yeah. Um, uh, and yeah, it was one of those things. I, I didn't have the, 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 the easiest childhood, so I waited too long to, to go get trained. But when I did, um, I mean, I think a lot of those, those underdog feelings and, and stuff like that kind of, kind of messed with my head at the beginning of training. So I was telling uh, some students on the way here, actually, like, I like to say, like, I want to say, you know, I started wrestling three years ago because three years ago is when I got some opportunities, which led to me having a bit of confidence, which led to better things, which led to me, you know, showing that in the ring. So, Well, first time I saw you wrestle was here at a Destiny event. Okay. And it was, um, you were in a fatal four-way. Okay. To get a, the the shot at the becoming part of the triple threat for that main event yes. against Loki yes. and Josh Alexander to yes. figure out who was going to be the interim Destiny champ because yes. obviously at the time Pete Dunne was injured. Correct. Yes. So that fatal four-way. That took me to another level. I was sitting two rows from the ringside, and you did that. I believe it was a 450 off the top. Yeah, yeah. And I turned around to my co-host, and I said, I don't know who this guy is, but I'm all in. And I was all in yeah, from the yeah, get-go. I appreciate it. And I'm all in about the – I'm a big fan of the athleticism, yes. and I'm a big fan of storytelling in the ring. My co-host, on the other hand, he's more of the guy he likes to build. Oh, okay. He likes to see where the story transcends. But obviously in indie shows, you don't really get a chance for much promos. Right. You don't get a chance to kind of transcend. Most of the time, the match is just, this is the match for tonight. Yep. And you got to go out there and you got 15, 20 yep. minutes to tell the best story. Yep. Yep. So in terms for you, especially being on the indie scene, yeah. you don't really have much chance to work on your promo skills. Right. So I'm assuming when you got trained... Where where did you start your training? Who trained you? And right off the bat, what were the things that they worked on with you the most? Now, um, one of my biggest things, again, was was confidence. Um, I was trained by Tyson Dukes um, and Scott Damore in Windsor, Ontario at Can-Am Wrestling School, uh, where I'm now a trainer now, um, which is great. But, Windsor represent? Yeah, Windsor represent. Um, but yeah, the, one of the biggest things that I had to work on was my confidence. You know, it was... You know, being able to, you know, stand up for myself. If a guy's beating me down, I didn't want to hit hard back. I didn't want to, so I'd always get my ass kicked, which, like, I, that's, that, that's why, you know, the underdog thing just works because it's, that's been me since day one. But the, um, promos and stuff like that was, was very hard for me because I've always been a dreamer since I was a child. So I shot a lot of promos with my buddies in a video camera. Um, but when you're put in a position where it's like, all right, say this, say this, say this, say this, say this, go. And you have cameras in your face and stuff like that. It's, it's a whole new world of things. Um, so right, it's it, hard to be organic yes, when you have to hit yes. those points because they want to move the story forward that exactly, way. Exactly, right? And, and, and sometimes you'll say something and it's cut, do that again. And so now you've got to switch the way you've said something over and over again. So it, it just took a lot of, you know, forcing me to do it. And which is which has been the case with a lot of things in, in wrestling for me is just forcing me into those situations. Like that day, um, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't know I was in that batch until I got here. Of course, yeah. So because I mean, in the indie scene, as we know, it's last minute yeah, changes sometimes. Things happen, right? you know. What I mean, cards subject to change, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so I mean, I got thrown in there, and I was so scared, and to be honest, like in a nerve sense, that it portrayed out there. And 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 God bless Loki, man. Like he. He gave me so many pointers and stuff before we went in there um, on how to sell, how to act, how to how to you know feel the crowd out, see where they're they're feeling, and those type of things. So um, I owe a lot of credit to him because he brought the story out of that match. Because for me, it would have been just okay, sir, whatever you want me to do, you know what I mean. But he made me you know think story like, and how are we going to tell this story, and those type of things, which I still get chills thinking about that day because you could feel that crowd, you know what I mean? You could feel the difference in the place. So it's, yeah, it's, it's, it was a, that was a, that was a big day for me. Very big day. So in terms of like, cause when you're in the business, you're obviously a fan. Yes. And now you've had a couple barn burners. You hung with Pete Dunn for a bit there. You had barn burners with Tyler Bate. I was here for that match. That was an incredible Thank match. You, that you. match lit it up. The only problem about that night was there was no triple X shirts. <laughs> yeah. I'm a big guy. And you know what? A lot of you wrestlers, I get it. Y'all got chiseled six packs. <laughs> yeah, ads, is, but some of us have guts. Those are like an extra three bucks. That makes it hard on us. You know what? I will, I will pay the, I will pay you the extra three I mean, bucks. I have no problem. 
love that. Get you one, I promise. But right. um, in terms of like that match with Tyler Bate, like when you when you have those big name wrestlers coming out here mm-hmm. to Mississauga to represent, tell a story with you, and they'll say, you know, this is my last time coming indie wise. Yeah. I want to work with this guy. Do you feel that extra added pressure, and do you also feel starstruck because who you're in the ring with? Yes, one hundred percent. Like I tell everybody all the time, like I'm I'm a fan at heart. Like I'll never change that. You know what I mean? So. Meeting those guys, obviously, I have to put on the professional, you know, the professional face, but I'm screaming in my head. Like, it's the coolest, you know what I mean? I've been blessed with some of the coolest opportunities ever. Um, um, but, yeah, like, it's, it's, it's weird because, like, I, I come into it super nervous, and then you, you're there, you're talking to the guy, and it's like, well, I'm here now. I can't run. Like, you know what I mean? So it's like your, your mind goes into this, like, let's just do this. Let's just do this. And then, you know, that builds into the next thing, which, again, builds confidence. And then it just it keeps rolling. So you mentioned rough childhood, and I don't definitely yeah, want to get man, into no that. Worries. But you mentioned a little bit of rough childhood, so you started training yes. late. In terms of family support, because sometimes yes. it's hard. A lot of family members don't get this. Like my yes. dad, yeah. my dad still kind of busts my chops here yeah. and there about, uh, you're, you're 35 years old. you got a wife, two kids. Yeah. You have a full-time job. Why are you still running with this yeah. radio show? Yeah. And I tell him because it's passion. Yeah. I feel the need to yeah. tell stories. And we've also been blessed very quickly for only being a year yeah. and a half in yeah. to have some big interviews. Right. Yourself, we sat down with Josh Alexander. We got George the Iceman was oh, one of our right. first ones out the gate. We hung with the Bubblegum Princess. She oh, was okay. great. Oh, she's great. Joey Maxim yeah. from CCW. He came out and represented. And you're the one. We just want to keep building. Hey, and we're going, we're up, going to man. keep going after all the indie guys that mm-hmm. we can. Because what we want to do and what we want to showcase differently mm-hmm. is putting Canadian Strong Style on the map. And I believe as much as Josh is the face, all you other guys are yep. at the forefront of it all. Yep. So in terms of family support, do you have that? Did you always have it? Or was it something that once they saw you and saw what you could do, then it was like, you know what? I didn't appreciate your yeah. life choices, yeah. but I get it now. That's uh, that's almost how it was. Like I, I, I'm super real usually with this type of stuff. Like when I was younger, I um, I wasn't into drugs or anything like that, or partying or anything. I was just wrestling was what I wanted to do, and I was very cocky about that in high school. So I didn't want to be there. I didn't care about it. You know what I mean? Which obviously, you know, is going to lead to your parents being like, "Yo, what are you doing?" <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you're how old, you know, like you're not doing anything like, you know, you're not going to live on my couch. You know what I mean? So what are you doing? Mm -hmm. You know? And I think for a lot of years, I, I didn't take that the right way. I was rebellious and like that type of thing. So it led to, you know, me being out on my own and, and, and learning life in like a, a really, you know, serious way. So you had to grow up quick. Exactly, man. Like I was 17 years old with an apartment and, you know, living. I've been there. Yeah. So it's like those real life things, you know what I mean? Being able to get through that, you know what I mean? And then getting trained and, and, and going through that. I mean, it made my mom turn her head and go like, all right, he's doing something with it. You know what I mean? And now, honestly, like I'm blessed with so much support from my mother and my dad's out there somewhere. But my my mother has, has supported me since day, you know, day one of going pro and was at my first match. She tries to come to every one of these. So she uh, the, the support is huge now. Um, and then now I'm learning, too. And like I said, you know, I like to say I started three years ago because three years ago is when I really started trying to hustle more and trying to get out there more and stuff like that. So I've received a lot more support from my peers and stuff as well, which is nice because um, I understand if I was looked at differently before, because I wasn't hustling. I wasn't doing, you know, the things that some like a Josh Alexander was doing, you know what I mean? So now that I've started to pick up and I've started to do those type of things, I think a lot of guys are looking my way going, all right, you know, he's, he's changed. He's doing something. So tonight you're in a match yes. with OV, OVE, a yeah. uh, tag team match. Yes. And uh, I'm a big fan of these guys. When they came down <laughs> the last time, they had the little scrap with Tyler yes. Bate and Trent Seven. Yes. They didn't get a chance to wrestle, but I picked up one of their shirts. We had a picture taken yep. together. It was such a great moment. But I got to be honest with you. I'm pulling for you. I appreciate that. I'm pulling for you because you know what? When you look at someone and you see a star, I mean, yeah, okay, I only talk I only talk on a wrestling show. Right. I've never lived the business. But I know enough about the business to try to educate others who may not know well, so much. Well, to be honest, that's why I'm talking to you. I mean, I, I could tell by talking to you before. You, you know what we're doing. You have respect for what we're doing. So you, I know the risks that are involved. Exactly. Because every time you step in the ring, safety comes yeah. first. Yeah. But you also want to put on a great show. And sometimes putting on a great show is going that extra mile. Yeah. So which is how I think every time I'm out there, you know, whether there's 20 or there's, you know, 500, I try to think I'm giving everything I got. You know I mean? But you mentioned too, that the card is subject to change. Yes. So how can you, I mean, you have the mentality of being safe, but sometimes you walk in, you think, okay, I'm going to face this guy. And at the last minute, George will pull you aside and say, okay, so Aiden, yep. this guy's out, this guy's in, yes. you got 20 minutes, yep. work on it. 
How do you come up with a story in such a short amount of time? And it's, it still looks so damn polished in it's, the rink. It's one of those things where it's like, I've been blessed with the guys from across the ring with for the,